actually I got I already got one of those tied on that's a this is sort of mimicking um, a buzz bait that I've made it's a very subtle presentation um, they actually call that smoke with gold fleck it's I think it's more of like a, a, a brown or a, or a black with gold fleck um, but having it pointed back there it's a, it's a very minnow like profile as opposed to you know something like this where it's it's mushroomed out and pushes a lot more water and a lot more obvious not just because of the color but because of because of how big that profile is this is something that's unique and um, it works with buzz baits we're gonna see if it works with spinner baits we'll pass this box back and forth all day today and uh, you guys you know don't throw any one spinner bait for longer than you know half hour but if we get on to, to one in particular that's good, we're gonna make note of it and um, put that one, you know, put our most productive models into in a production. I like this cranking rod. I gotta get me another one of these. What's the rod you're using? This is one of the legend tournament. Magnum Cranker Rods by St. Croix. That's a crankbait rod, isn't it? Yes, indeed, but it's great for spinner baits. If you watch, you can actually see the tip throbbing as I'm pulling the spinner bait back. Just shows you how much action this new prototype spinner bait has when you slow roll it. Ah, uh, you got off. You got off. We got a. I just missed one. I had him on for a second. I was waiting for the camera to get going. He wasn't real big, but first bite of the day on a spinner bait on the very large number five hammered Colorado, that black with blue together. Um, I was really doing the whole fishing it like a jig thing. I brought him up to the surface twice, maybe 14 or 15. Not, like I said, not a real big one, but to start, we were in the foam trail behind the, uh, a little current break up there and I was just hopping it up off the bottom and letting it go back down and I could feel it tapping the rocks. I don't know if I can stand You got one man? Yes oh, I do. I see fat. Yep. The net's hooked. Just hoisting that food. Ran it up and right under the, uh, see that stick right in the middle under the under the trees. Just yeah. kind of let it sink down to the bottom, clank off the bottom once or twice, and then slowly brought it back. You want a you want a photo? Sure. All right. Yeah. Oh, is he pretty? Yeah. I think it's the it's the gold speckle with the uh, I think it's number four blade. It's a real subtle one. Yeah. I'm surprised that worked in this. The stained water. It was all the presentation. Yeah, all you right. We're coming up on a spot on the Susquehanna where Jeff filmed a, a section of the kayak river fishing skills DVD. You um, filmed it. I was just in it. We're coming up on the, the area of rocks where Jeff did the purpose, the, he tipped over the kayak just to show the safe swimmer position uh, if you would happen to tip over with your legs pointing downstream. Uh, if any of you have that DVD, the rocks are a lot more visible that day. The water was a lot uh, down a lot from what it is now. That we're coming up on those same sections of rocks in the cataract and this should be fun to slide down across them as opposed to doing it with the kayak. I'll tell you, the, the biggest drops look the most benign from the upstream angle. Like if you look at it, it's just a horizon. If you were downstream from it from the same distance, you'd really see what it is. But from the top, it's, it doesn't look like much, but it is. <laughs> 